Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, before we start, I'd just like to say thanks for the 2,000 subscribers. Really, really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, so today I'll be talking about the types of resin that I use for uh, customizing the action figures. Uh, if you're just getting started in customizing, uh, just know that this is not needed in order to make great customs. Um, I started with reusing parts from different figures and it works fine. Uh, the main advantage of having a 3D printer or prints is that uh, the part that you need is readily available. It's what you wanted and you don't have to purchase multiple figures just to get that specific hand, head sculpt or weapon, right? Uh, so basically the sky's the limit uh, with the 3D printer. Uh, kind of like with my custom Galactus, there's no way I could have uh, made that one without 3D printed parts. Uh, I'll be talking about the resins that I use. Uh, it's all from the company Resiwan and they've been extremely generous uh, the past couple of years and their support uh, and techs have been very helpful with uh, troubleshooting issues. So yeah, firstly I'll talk about the Tough 74. So this resin is advertised as wear resistant and just uh, an overall tough resin. So I use this resin mostly for prints that would take a bit of a beating. So let's say weapons, especially weapon handles joints, uh, movable parts, kind of like the fingers of my 3D printed Sentinel. Uh, I also use it for head sculpts with short protruding parts, so like very spiky hair, long nose, long ears, uh, something like that. Then there's also the SP64, um, which is like their standard resin. Uh, although it's not as durable and uh, tough as the Tough 74, but it does show greater details I find, and it prints in a matte finish afterwards. Uh, with this one as well, you can uh, also get away with using very thin or, or fine supports uh, So it leaves very minimal support rashes. I don't know if that's a real term for it But yeah, it's, uh, it also prints out uh, more brittle than the Tough 74 So to counteract the brittleness, uh, I do use their TH72 uh, to make it more flexible. Uh, I would, it would still break if you really drop it or you bend it, uh, but enough so that hair strands can flex without breaking when you put it in an action figure. But I'll talk more about the TH-72 in a bit. Okay, uh, so TH-72 for our customizing purposes and just based on my experience overall with it, I find that it is more of an additive resin to the standard uh, resin uh, than a standalone one. So I only use uh, this resin when I am printing anything that needs to have more flex to it. Uh, so for example, female head sculpts or anything with long hair, uh, long tongue like venom or long thin weapons like, uh, like katana. Uh, but you'll see that with the examples on the screen that it adds a bit of flex to it, but it's still very prone to breaking if you forcefully uh, try to break it. So an example of why I don't use it by itself, uh, so as you can see it can be very flexible as hell. But in the long run, uh, when you constantly expose it to lights or heat from your display, it warps a bit. Uh, now I have a bent sword. So yeah, I would say add some standard resin with it, do at least 50-50 and it should work well. All right, uh, let's talk about the F69. Uh, so this is hands down my favorite resin. Uh, it's a different type of flexible resin compared to the TH72, as it's more rubber-like when it's cured. Uh, I mainly use this for all of the armor kits that I use. Uh, I use it for chest emblems as well, as it easily molds to the shape of the chest, so belts and all that stuff. Uh, when you download the settings from the Resi1 website, uh, just make sure that you change the layer height uh, down to 0.05 uh, for finer details at, as it defaults to 0.07. Just better details for your armor kits. The pink object is printed with F80, so it's a much flexible, much more rubber-like uh, resin that Resin has. Check it out. Uh, the only disadvantage with this resin is that it is hard to clean uh, due to how sticky and thick it is. 
Uh, you'd also need to use at least uh, medium support settings in order to print it properly. So I'd say around like 0.45 millimeters of tip diameter. And then I find that it is also very temperature reliant. Uh, so at least room temperature or you might have uh, to get a warmer for it. Next up are the water washables or the WW123 resins. Uh, they come in different translucent colors and gray. Uh, so these are perfect for energy effects and elemental effects. Uh, WW123 is also very easy to clean up with water. Uh, just make sure that you only cure it for about one to two minutes or yellowing may happen. Uh, just find that, that these are extremely brittle, uh, at least the translucent ones, so be very careful with it. After curing, I'd also recommend to uh, do a gloss clear coat so it pops more. Next one is the anti-impact resin. Uh, it is advertised as a nylon-like durable resin and out of all of the resins I'd say that this is the best to use for action figure parts like hands, torsos, etc. I usually mix it uh, with about 20-30% to 30 of the uh, TH72 resin to give it a bit of a flex. Uh, it just makes assembly easier, especially for the pegs. Uh, out of all of the resins, it's also the hardest to print. Uh, it just needs to be heated up uh, for it to print properly. Otherwise, you're going to have lots of failures. So here I am just comparing a brief piece printed in F69. And the other one is uh, printed with anti-impact and TH72 resin. Uh, as you can see, the F69 is perfect for this uh, specific part as it is more flexible and also softer. Just avoids um, a paint rub. As you can see, the piece printed with anti-impact is very durable. Uh, definitely great for weapons as well. So it took a lot of force to break that one and you can see me bending it here a little bit more there we go it took a lot of force for it to break In audio. so that's it for our video uh, so we'll just summarize what i think is the best use for each when it comes to customizing action figures f69 best for armor kits TH72 is best used as an additive to make things more flexible. TOF74 is best used for parts that take a lot of beating like weapons or joints. SP64 is best for general use like head sculpts. Uh, Anti-impact resin for uh, Materials that needs to be very durable like torsos, pegs and all that. Uh, water washable 1, 2, 3 is best for those that can only use water washable resins at home. In audio. Hopefully this has been informative. Thanks for watching. See ya!